Hey y'all, it's me, Lynn Daniel, coming to you today. This Saturday, November 4th, 2017, and I am here on The Buddy Zone. This is my teacher YouTube channel where I talk to you about teacher at work-life balance. So yesterday I made a video about some stuff and I talked about scheduling. So if you haven't viewed that video, go back and check it out because today I want to kind of elaborate a little bit about how teachers can use scheduling and not just teachers, not just teams of teachers, but schools can use scheduling as a tool and approach to help increase learning engagement, improve instructional instruction, um, and and really just set a tone, improve the climate and the spirit and the um, culture of the school. So you know, I was thinking back on my studies you know on my first master's degree and then on my educational specialist uh, degree and in those courses especially in my educational specialist coursework we did a project a class that was a semester long and in that class we had to uh, develop devise a, a hypothetical school and then we had to of course develop a hypothetical schedule for our hypothetical school. And I can recall um, reading about the trimester schedule and I really was enthralled by, the, well not enthralled, but I liked the trimester schedule for some of the older students, particularly middle schoolers and high schoolers who needed more time on task and more time to learn so that they could improve academics, so that they can improve self-concept and other things that are necessary to build learners and to help them to be comfortable in a um, successful learning environment. The trimester, um, I'm going to include a link below in the description box, um, a resource from ASCD so you are able to go in and look at this resource. It is an article in, it's called The Power of Innovative Scheduling by Robert Lynn Kennedy and Michael Reddick. And it talks about alternative schedules and how it provides you a variety of alternative schedules. So I really, and this article is from 1995. So this was around the time when I was getting my first master's degree. And um, back in that time though, getting resources was slow. You would wait for articles or you would uh, get them from your libraries. Oftentimes it was a waiting game. Technology was fairly new and, and hardly anyone knew how to use it. So getting this type of information back 25 years ago was a slower process. Nowadays, we are able to share with one another how our school schedules are benefiting us, how we find that they support learning, how they support instruction, how our schedules do help to create a sense of pride in school culture and, um, and that type of thing. And so that's why I'm coming to you on video, just to talk a little bit about this and hopefully to start a conversation about how schedules can improve our whole school, you know? So um, the one main reason to even, like if you're considering revamping a schedule, it would probably be to address instruction and learning, to provide quality instructional time for your students. And I thought the trimester schedule is a great way to do that because um, the trimester schedule let me see if I can find anything on it here. Um, the trimester schedule will allow your students to take two courses a trimester. And the class time, the learning time, would be like a two hour chunk of learning time. Now that's a lot of time, I know. It is a lot of time. But if you're doing things like STEAM and STEM and project-based learning and you're doing stations and students are 
uh, constructing uh, books and building literacy through uh, technological literacy and uh, language literacy and things, and they're using technology. I think the trimester schedule allows enough time for teachers to really dig in to get to know their students, to um, have conferences with their students, provide small group, individual, and whole group instruction, and really move around that um, learning process. <clears throat> um, I just, I, I think it's a great, it can be a great way to improve instruction and to build relationships in school, especially when you want, um, it's like if you're looking at middle schoolers who could really benefit from a mentor, you know, when um, you have students, all age groups can benefit from a good, strong mentor relationship, but in the middle school, when you know, you may have limited after school time, you have limited um, before school time and weekend time, but if you, I'm thinking a trimester schedule will allow students to, you have three, instead of the two semesters, you have the three trimesters, and then students take two classes each trimester, and the classes are about two hours long, and then they have a 45 minute chunk of time where they could um, extend their learning, maybe do some enrichment or interventions, or maybe they could do some community service or volunteerism um, with the, within the community. There are so many things you can build into a school schedule that will support um, creating a, a, um, a family environment or the environment that you want that is culturally and linguistically responsive and responsive to whatever the needs of your students. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on there. I'm gonna provide the link so you all can take a look at, there are so many, the 75, 75, 30 plan, the four block schedule, so many different ones. In my um, school now, we did the five day rolling schedule days one two three four five that was a new concept to me I had never done that one um, we are doing um, right now collectively we are doing an, a three core daily and we have our Wednesdays that are at a standstill um, because that's our early release day, so we don't touch Wednesdays. We leave Wednesday as a standalone day. But on that day, we do project-based learning through the ethics program. We do our well-managed classroom social skill lesson on that day. We do um, academic interventions on that day. But the rest of our schedule on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we do three core academic classes a day. But social studies and science are doing creative because they get, on two days of the week, they get seventh grade and eighth grade and they flip. So there are so many different things that you can do as a school community with the schedule to help meet the needs of your learner. And some of these non-traditional schedules can, I think, um, really get to the core of providing time for learning, time for instruction, time for assessment, time for intervention, time for mentoring, all of the time, all of that of what you need. And plus, you know, you have 180 plus school days of the year. You don't have to do the same schedule all year long, you know? Um, that's another option for schools. And, and you don't have to change the schedule for every grade level either. So there's so many options provided that uh, I just wanted to share with you all and kind of think out, think aloud about the schedules and um, look at the pros and cons of using schedule changes as an approach to improve instruction, learning, engagement, um, 
you know, achievement, student achievement. And so what do you all think? What do you all think? I know that one of the cons of doing a trimester is students on average have yet to learn how to budget their time and manage their time for um, studying and task completion. But with guidance and with instruction on how to do that, I think a trimester schedule could work and you wouldn't have 40% of students failing algebra. If the team or the teachers involved in that reconfigured schedule have been or provided PD on how to manage the time. Two hours is a long time. So, I don't know. What do you all think? Those are my thoughts. Alright? Alright, be blessed. Thumbs up. Alright, bye. <laughs>